EQ is a massive subject for audio engineers. It's so fundamental to the process that the majority of your mix time is probably spent tweaking EQ plugins. In this video, I'll go over everything you need to know to start using EQ like a pro from the ground up. Imagine two instruments playing the same unison melody. On a recording, we notice the two sounds overlap, making it difficult to hear them individually. This effect is called masking. EQ is used in mixing to help reduce the effect of masking so that each instrument can be heard clearly. To understand EQ, we need to talk about filters. Your EQ is essentially a specialized kind of filter. The characteristics of that filter determine a lot about the sound of the EQ and the best way to use it. If you break down the settings of an individual band of EQ, they all refer to the basic characteristics of filters. Factors like type, Q, frequency, and gain. I'll explain each one and how they affect your sound. High pass and low pass filter. These filters are named for the frequencies they leave unaffected rather than the range they cut. That means that a low cut is known as a high pass filter and a high cut is known as a low pass filter. Reach for these filter types when you need to clean up issues at the extreme ends of the spectrum. The steep drop off around the corner frequency can easily tame boomy low end or piercing ultra high resonances. Bell. Bell filters are your standard tools for boosting and cutting. Their shape can be manipulated using the Q parameter. This is your go-to choice for sculpting and tone shaping. Boost or cut at specific points and decide how broadly to affect neighboring frequencies with the Q control. Shelf. Shelf or shelving filters boost or cut all frequencies above or below the corner frequency. This type is effective for making broad tonal changes. Think of low and high shelves like the tone controls on your stereo system. Q is short for quality factor. You can think of it as the bandwidth of an EQ band. Q values of less than one will give you broader EQ curves, while values greater than one will give you tighter, more selective boosts or cuts. Gain. Gain determines the amount of boost or cut you apply with your EQ. It's measured in dB. Positive gain values indicate a boost, while negative ones make it a cut. Frequency. The frequency is the center of your EQ band's action. This control determines the range where boosts or cuts will occur. It's important to remember that there's no such thing as a perfect filter. No matter how tightly you set your Q, an EQ band will always affect a range of frequencies around the target. A good rule of EQ is less is more. Extreme tonal shifts can have a negative impact on your sounds. The best way to use EQ is however you can get away with using the least. With that in mind, there are two main ways to approach EQ. Additive EQ means boosting frequencies to achieve the results you want, while subtractive EQ means cutting offending frequencies out. There's plenty of debate about whether it's better to do one or the other. But if your goal is to use the least amount of EQ, you can simply choose whichever approach is the most direct route to your destination. For example, if you only need to cut one narrow range, using three or four bands to boost every other region of the spectrum is less transparent than just using a single band to cut the main offender. On the other hand, if all you need to do to make a sound pop is boost one range, cutting everything else and applying makeup gain isn't the quickest route. In the course of your mix process, you'll probably use an EQ on every single track in your session. With such an important tool, it's key to have a solid foundation in how to use it. Now that you have the fundamentals down, get back to your tracks and sculpt some sounds with EQ.